nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. I'd like to give you an introduction to band structure engineering as to why you would care and what you can do and what the outputs are. So going back to some fundamentals on quantum states, uh, we know about isolated atoms that they have discrete states that we describe them by, uh, by orbitals and we, this is where really quantum mechanics lives and has been invented in. You have optical transitions, you have Coulomb repulsion, we understand all of these things quite well in isolated atoms. Uh, the challenge is when you bring these atoms closer together, uh, what you form are these regularly ordered atoms and these solids, these states start to talk to each other. And uh, the way they talk to each other, they form bands and we think of it as a solid. And as electrical engineers, that is where we touch matter, right? We have transport, we have mobility and connectivity. I mean, that's where, as electrical engineers, we feel reasonably comfortable. And we kind of uh, think of these bands as, as entities where these electrons can move freely. Okay? And often we completely forget about all the underlying quantum mechanics that's under the hood that actually gave us a conduction band. Right? It's just a band and the electrons move in there. That's it, right? So let's think a little bit further what you can do uh, about that or how you should think about it. What does it really mean electrons move freely? So here's a quantum dot and I'm showing it from two different angles. It's the same quantum dots, right? But I'm looking at from two different angles and here I'm rotating it around. I mean, this thing looks very different from different angles, right? It's very obvious. So what does it mean to move freely, right? That thing is, has crystal symmetry to it. Why would I move freely in one direction just the same way as the other one. Okay? That's a fundamental question you should ask yourself. Also, we know that each of these orbital uh, atoms is described by different orbitals. And we know that these orbitals are nothing but symmetric. Okay? So what does it mean to move freely if you're described, if your basis set is actually not symmetric? That's a question you should ask yourself. So most of the time as electrical engineers, we get uh, uh, all of this packaged in the following way. Well, somebody solved Schrodinger's equation, right? And they came up with this, with this ansatz of a plane wave, and they compute this energy as a function of momentum. And then they put this dispersion in your face, and say, well, this is very complicated, but here it is. And it's so complicated, we really don't want to deal with it. What we typically do is we'll put a parabola right here. It's pretty close to a parabola, right? And maybe we'll put another parabola out at the X point. And maybe we'll put another parabola here at the, at the gamma point for the holes. And then we kind of know that these bands talk to each other but we'll most of the time sort of forget about that. And the typical assumptions are that these bands are decoupled, uh, that you have parabolic bands, and you sort of forget about all of this quantum mechanics and you're stuck with one band or two bands, depending on what you pick. Okay? And they're parabolic, and Within these bands, we understand that there's an effective mass, there's a mobility and some relaxation and some conduction and valence bands, right? And then we build uh, uh, sophisticated simulators like a drift diffusion simulator, a Boltzmann simulator, or quantum transport, just based on the assumption that there's a conduction band and an effective mass. We completely have forgotten all the underlying assumptions that actually got us that dispersion, okay? I want you to realize that that is the typical assumption you start to work from in your classwork or when you build a simulator. 
And what I'm asserting here is that this will fail at the nanometer scale where bands are strongly coupled and you have material variations on the nanometer scale. And I'm going to make that case in the next slide or in the next set of slides. So imagine that you have a molecular beam epitaxy and you can put down blue atoms and yellow atoms, whatever blue and yellow is. And I'm just going to pick on one, uh, one con uh, say, conduction band edge. And since blue and yellow are different from each other, these two bands are going to be aligned differently because they're different materials. And since you have an MBE or MOCVD uh, uh, reactor, uh, you can think about building stacks of these devices, right? The blue and yellow atoms. And since their bands are misaligned, you have these sort of gaps in these bands, right? And what people typically do is they sort of forget that there's these core potentials and they sort of draw just straight lines. Right? Band structure engineering. You just draw these quantum wells and barriers like that. And then you typically forget about that there's, there's these core potentials. And in the next step, uh, you might even forget that there's atoms. Okay? You just draw these band edge diagrams. Right? There's a quantum well. This is how you, most of you guys have seen quantum wells. There was not an awareness that there's actually atoms making this up. And then you say, oh, I can do quantum mechanics on this, right? This is a particle in a box. I can compute a particle in a box. And I can calculate S states and P states and so on. And I might visualize them with just straight lines. And then you say, wow, this is band structure engineering. This is really cool. Because I can have photon absorption, I can have photon emission, and I can have tunneling, right? And this is the level that you typically think of a heterostructure. Okay? You draw these stick diagrams and say, well, this is gallium arsenide, this is aluminum arsenide, and I'm going to do quantum mechanics of it. And that's really cool, right? These things are being used for real things, like infrared detectors, like a quantum well, or for lasers, like a cascade laser, or for resonant tunneling diodes for logic and memory. And all of this is really like a cornucopia of things of you can do with a heterostructure, right? It's a field by itself of heterostructure, uh, band structure engineering, and all of the, say, really novel devices in lasers and detectors, uh, even uh, modern uh, transistors are dominated by quantum effects uh, that are visualized in this very nicely. But what I'd like to highlight is that in order to model this device, as I said in the previous presentation, this RTD, you've got to put all the atoms back to do this right. Okay? So, are there any questions on the band structure engineering part? Very simple, right? You've done all of this. Good.